Good morning and hello everyone. I'm Dan McClellan, the e-learning coordinator for the BioNetwork BioEd Center, and welcome to today's webinar entitled BioNetwork's Analytical Training Lab, a unique resource for industry, instructors, and students. Our BioForum is scheduled to run from 10 a.m. until approximately 11 Eastern Time. If at any time during today's presentation you have a question, please feel free to type it in the chat box, which is located on the right side of your screen. Now, I'll be keeping a record of each question that is submitted, and we'll have a time at the end of the presentation to address all of your questions. And be sure to send your chats to all participants. Now, we will be sharing a short video during today's webinar, and when it's time, the video will appear in a media viewer panel, again, on the right side of your screen. Now, you can use your mouse to drag and change the size of these panels, and you can also minimize other panels, such as the chat and participants panels, by clicking the collapse icon. We'd like to know who we have in our audience today, and I have loaded a poll, and you should see it on the right side of your screen. So please go ahead, if you haven't already, and select the option that best describes you. Also, we'd like to have an accurate record of your participation in today's BioForum, so let us know if you're sharing a screen by typing the total number of participants at your location in question number two. Now, if you're the only person viewing at your screen, just type the number one. And while you're doing that, I encourage you to mark your calendars for our August BioForum, uh, which is entitled BioWork 2.0. We'll discuss new updates which are now available in this popular BioWork course. More information and registration is available online at ncbionetwork.org. Thank you again. We're excited to have all of you meeting with us. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to our panelists today, Merrick and Ryan. Hi, I'm Merrick Lewis, director of the BioNetwork uh, Pharmaceutical Center located in Winston-Salem. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, many of you may already be aware of what BioNetwork and its mission is, but for those of you new to the BioForum, I thought I would take a moment to explain all the pieces that make up this valuable resource. BioNetwork is a statewide initiative of the community college system and supports the growth of biotechnology in North Carolina. It is exactly as the name suggests a network that encourages all the entities of biotechnology to talk to each other, share information, collaborate, and create a joint effort to increase the growth of biotechnology in the state. We work to get industry feedback for course development, to provide resources to students and educators, to foster collaborative exchange between colleges and universities, to create community awareness, to train incumbent workers to maintain or increase skill levels, and ultimately to create a pipeline of trained employees for biotech companies. And why is all this important? Because North Carolina is number three in the nation for the number of biotechnology companies, and a great deal of resources have been committed by the state's leaders to ensure we continue to grow in these ranks. Future jobs will depend on science and technology skills, and preparing that workforce is paramount to servicing the needs of existing biotech companies and showing new and expanding companies that North Carolina is the right place for them. And how do we do this? Well, through the BioNetwork centers. Initially, there were six centers established in 2004 each located in one of the major geographic regions of the state, each with a specific focus identified for industry and college support. A seventh center was added in 2008. There's the Bioprocessing Center in Pitt County, which focuses on curriculum development and outreach. The Bioagriculture Center in Robinson County, supporting agricultural development and workforce training. The Bioeducation Center in Gaston County, which focuses on instructional design and e-learning. The Capstone Center in Wake County, providing unique hands-on training in a simulated industrial environment. The 
Bio Business Center in Buncombe County, working with startup biotech companies and supporting small businesses. and the National Center for Biotechnology Workforce in Forsyth County, representing BioNetwork on a national level. Also in Forsyth County is our center, the Pharmaceutical Center, jointly hosted by both Forsyth Tech and Guilford Technical Community College. It was initially tasked to support the pharmaceutical industry and some of its first training courses were in GMP, or Good Manufacturing Practices, part of the regulations and guidelines for FDA-regulated industries. These GMP basics still make up a sizable portion of courses we teach each year. Expanding within the pharmaceutical industry, we quickly added to our course selection other topics to support that industry. These would include additional courses based on FDA regulations and those focused on support functions, such as on-the-job training and technical writing. The Pharma Center soon expanded to serve most life science companies and those companies regulated by the FDA. This includes medical device and diagnostics, regenerative medicine, and food processing. Each of these industries have their own set of FDA rules to follow, and each require a slightly different approach to training, but they all share some common training needs, such as proper documentation, basic safety, and working in controlled environments. They are all industries where product contamination could lead to catastrophe and proper training can ensure product safety. Our latest expansion, and perhaps most exciting, is the new analytical training lab. Recognizing a gap in training resources for these specific analytical chemistry skills, the Pharma Center added a training laboratory containing state-of-the-art analytical equipment. There is no other facility like it in our state. Techniques learned at the lab are those used in quality control for all pharmaceuticals, ensuring the product contains all the ingredients it should in the quantity required while confirming no contaminants were added in the manufacturing process. These skills are also used in dozens of other industries where product or ingredient analysis is crucial to product quality, as well as in medical laboratories or for drug testing, forensic identification, and countless other applications. I'm going to now turn the presentation over to Ryan Gilmore, who will tell you more about the equipment in the lab. Thanks, Merrick, and good morning, everyone. We are fortunate in our lab to have such sophisticated equipment to work with every day. Much of the equipment we have in the lab is comparable to what the industry is using so that we can train students on the types of equipment that scientists and technicians are actually using. This also gives us the opportunity to provide a hands-on approach to training that we can incorporate into our analytical-based courses, where students can learn how to set up equipment, run the actual software programs in order to fully understand how the system works. Pictured here and on the next few slides, you will see many of the specific types of equipment in our lab. We are fortunate to have two HPLCs, or more commonly known as high-performance liquid chromatographs, and sometimes referred to as high-pressure liquid chromatography. This instrument has been used in laboratories for over 30 years to separate compounds within a mixture for identifying, quantifying, purifying the individual components based on how the comp compounds interact within the system. In many labs, HPLC is used to determine how pure a sample is and what other impurities may be found in the product. It's important to do this test to make sure that the drugs we take are safe and effective. For many years, scientists have looked at fast HPLC as a way to speed up analyses as many HPLC procedures can be very time-consuming. The so-called need for speed has been driven by the high numbers of samples in some laboratories, particularly drug discovery labs, and the availability of affordable and easy-to-use equipment. 
UPLC, or known as Ultra Performance Liquid Chromatography, presents the ability to extend and expand the utility of chromatography when many scientists have reached roadblocks. UPLC pushes the limits of conventional HPLC by being able to analyze samples faster and under higher pressures. New chemistry and instrumentation technology provides more information as UPLC offers increased speed, resolution, and sensitivity needed for liquid chromatography. Lab technicians who normally work with HPLC may encounter run times in samples from 30 to 60 minutes. And they would benefit from UPLC as run times are significantly reduced to as long as five minutes, depending on what type of sample they have. In our lab, we have five UPLCs for use. New advancements in liquid chromatography have encountered some problems along the way. Many scientists that are used to running traditional HPLC methods are finding it hard to make the switch to the faster UPLC method. A new recent technology that we have in our lab has been developed as a hybrid HPLC and UPLC model called the UPLC H class. This is designed to replace HPLC systems and accelerate the use of UPLC among those HPLC users. We are lucky to have one UPLC H class in our lab. Mass spectrometry is a powerful analytical technique that is used to identify unknown compounds, to quantify known compounds, and to determine the structure and chemical properties of molecules. Detection of compounds can be accomplished with a very small quantity, which makes it very useful in labs that produce a limited supply of product that may need to undergo testing. Mass spectrometry provides valuable information to a wide range of professionals and is often used in many pharmaceutical and environmental laboratories to give structures to certain drugs that have been produced or to identify potential toxins that may be affecting local water environments. We have two LCMS instruments in our lab that are connected to UPLCs for analysis. <clears throat> Gas chromatography is a process that allows for separation of mixtures of gases or substances that can be vaporized by heat. Instead of a liquid solvent, like we learned about in HPLC, an inert or non-reactive gas is used to force the mixture through the instrument and separate the gaseous components. The widespread acceptance of gas chromatography is unique in the laboratory instrumentation field. Today, it is used in most every branch of chemical industry, particularly the production of petrochemicals from oil and natural gas. We have three GC instruments in our lab for training and testing. Gas chromatography mass spectrometry, or GCMS, is a method that combines the features of gas chromatography and mass spectrometry to identify different substances within a test sample. Applications of GCMS include drug detection, fire investigation, environmental analysis, explosives detection, and identification of unknown samples. Additionally, it can identify trace elements and materials that were previously thought to have been broken down beyond identification. GCMS has been widely thought of as a gold standard for forensic substance identification, as it can aid in identifying unknown samples from evidence collected at the scene of a crime. But don't let it fool you. It's not as easy as CSI makes it seem. We have one GCMS in our lab. The ultraviolet visible, or commonly known as UV-Vis spectrophotometer, is an instrument commonly used in the laboratory that analyzes compounds in the ultraviolet UV and visible regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. UV absorption spectroscopy is one of the best methods for determining impurities in organic molecules, such as pharmaceutical drugs. Additional peaks can be observed due to impurities in the sample, and it can be compared with that of a standard raw material. By also measuring the absorptions at specific wavelengths, the impurities can be detected. Much like mass spectrometers, UV detectors are common in detection of compounds by HPLC. UV-Vis also has many uses in biochemistry and molecular biology labs that are used to working with DNA or cell culture techniques to quantify bacteria. Another great analytical instrument that we have in our lab is the Carl Fisher titrator. The Carl Fisher titration is a universally acknowledged method for measuring water content or moisture determination in types of samples, uh, including chemicals, oils, 
pharmaceuticals, and food. Because water can affect product quality, texture, shelf life, stability, and reactivity, it must be readily tested to ensure that the amount will not affect the efficacy of the product that's produced. The two types of Carl Fisher titration are coulometric and volumetric. Coulometric uh, titration is used for samples containing a small amount of water, while volumetric titration is used when there is a high concentration of water. We have one Carl Fisher titrator in our lab. Rotary evaporators, or rotovaps as they are usually called in the lab, are important pieces of equipment to have as they are used to promote the rapid removal of excess solvent from less volatile samples or samples that have high boiling points, like water. In many laboratory processes, large amounts of chemicals are used to perform certain experiments. And often analysis by analytical instrumentation only requires a, a small amount for testing. Therefore, a scientist would use a rotovap to evaporate off all the excess solvent, leaving the small amount needed for testing. A good example of a rotovap use would be taking a large sample of salt water and gently removing all the excess water to expose the salt crystals in a flask. We have two rotary evaporators in our lab. And lastly, Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy, or FTIR, is a powerful tool used for identifying types of chemical bonds in a molecule by producing a spectrum, which is much like a picture, or sometimes called a molecular fingerprint for a compound. It can be utilized to quantitate some components of an unknown mixture before running an unknown sample on a more specific advanced piece of equipment like LC or GC that we, I've talked about before. It can be applied to the analysis of solids, liquids, and gases due to the use of specialized attachments that make sample preparation procedures very easy. In the picture, a solid sample is being placed directly onto the instrument for analysis without having to manip manipulate it in any matter. We have one FTIR in our lab. Well, thanks, Ryan. With this great history and all these new resources, our goals are simple. Support industry, educators, students, and the community by training incumbent workers providing entry-level or refresher training for job seekers, being an analytical resource for area companies, providing skill-building opportunities for students, being an educational resource for teachers, and by fostering public interest in and understanding of the sciences. For companies seeking training for their employees, we offer expert educators teaching from basic to advanced topics. We can help you determine your training needs, work within your company's demanding training schedule, and offer classes on-site at your company. There may also be some funding opportunities through the North Carolina Community College System for companies that are new or expanding or transitioning to new technology. Some of our courses are listed here, representing most of the major types of equipment that Ryan showed you earlier as well as complementary skills required to develop methods, prepare samples, and work with auxiliary equipment such as compressed gas. We develop on average about two new courses each semester using data acquired from our industry contacts to determine what types of training are most in demand, as well as which types and brands of equipment are used most. For those seeking a new career, we offer our basic lab series, training students in basic lab skills and common laboratory techniques. We're also developing a series of transitional courses designed to offer students with basic lab skills training in chromatography theory and then on to hands-on training in HPLC and GC. For life science companies <clears throat> needing access to specialized analytical equipment, we offer use of our laboratory for testing. We can also provide assistance in troubleshooting and transferring methods and provide space for sample prep and supply storage. Many companies have used our facilities and equipment for their testing needs, saving them thousands in equipment expenditures by using this shared resource. 
Here's a short video clip where you'll get to hear firsthand how companies have benefited from access to the analytical training lab and hear from some other supporters about how BioNetwork Network has impacted them. Located in the Piedmont Triad Research Park, the BioNetwork Analytical Training Lab is a state-of-the-art facility. The lab is home to the latest tools in analytical chemistry. Lauren Steinbach is CEO and Lab Director of Triad Forensics Laboratory. Her company performs forensics, medical, environmental, and product testing. I send all my employees here to get training. I know that I can work with BioNetwork and they'll design a training curriculum. They get the hands-on and it's on the actual equipment that they will be using. Triad Forensics Laboratory calls the analytical training lab home because it provides access to resources that most startup companies can't afford. The equipment, the way that it's set up, you just do not see this with most startup labs. And there's certainly not another facility that would let a company incubate with them. We both want BioNetwork and the Analytical Training Center to be successful. Our company depends on it, and I think the region depends on it as well. The BioNetwork Analytical Training Lab is helping keep biotech companies in the triad as well as attract new ones. The state of North Carolina is very strong in the biotechnology space, in part because of the infrastructure we have in place with the community college systems and bio-network training programs such as this particular center it is a tremendous asset and a competitive advantage quite frankly in recruiting companies and also sustaining existing industry that's here. The analytical training lab offers hands-on training programs for community college students. Mary Sapp is a biotechnology student at Forsyth Tech. She knows that her training here gives her an advantage. Being able to say that, yeah, I use the gas chromatography machine and I had the training here when I go for a job interview, that that's a skill that not too many people have. And hopefully that'll give me a little bit of an edge. This one-of-a-kind facility offers both lecture and lab components, which provide a strong skill set in the latest analytical evaluation techniques. There's absolutely no excuse for a company to not have a trained workforce. It's affordable. I couldn't afford all this equipment, but I can have each of my employees sitting at one of these pieces of equipment learning, hands-on, individually, one-on-one. -on -one. To find out more about the BioNetwork Analytical Training Lab, go online to ncbionetwork.org. Thanks, Dan. Uh, in the video, you saw Mary Sapp, who at the time was a chemistry student at Forsyth Tech. One of our primary goals is to provide access to analytical equipment to community college and university students as an extension of their life science degree program. With hands-on experience on these specialized instruments, students will be better able to compete in the workforce after graduation. These are experiences most students can't get at their college or university because most colleges do not have the resources to provide this variety of equipment. Mary first came to the analytical training lab with her chemistry instructor for a half day workshop in gas chromatography. She returned for additional training with her instructor and later joined us as a work study student and helped us prepare for classes in the lab. While in the lab, she connected with a company in the research park that used our lab for some of its testing. Mary joined this company for a short internship and gained more analytical skills along the way. Shortly after graduating from Forsyth Tech, Mary was hired full-time by a local biotech company and works with them now in their quality control department. She's a fine example of how a student can couple a solid educational foundation from the community college with the specialized hand-on training that we offer to, cre to create a competitive edge in the workforce. As I mentioned, Mary's first exposure to our lab was through her chemistry instructor. College instructors can benefit from our experts to help them add content to their own curriculum including advice on lab activities. 
They can also bring their class to the lab for short workshops conducted by our lab technicians, or they can use the lab to perform their own tests and experiments, as well as our classroom for lecture components. Ryan, can you show them a typical technique we might teach in the lab? Sure. On the following slides, we will showcase how a recent group of students from Forsyth Tech Community College used our FTIR to supplement the organic chemistry lab. Here you will see a student placing a solid substance onto the surface of the FTIR plate for analysis. The following slides will show the results of this procedure. This here is another view of the solid sample on the surface ready for testing. Now the sample is prepared for analysis. The student in this picture is making sure that the solid sample is directly on the surface by turning a knob which, in turn, creates pressure and causes the solid sample to come in contact with the surface to eliminate interferences by the outside environment. This picture shows the sample completely in place and ready for analysis. Note the pressurized sample down in the center of the white dot on the, sil on the silver surface. In as little as five minutes, the computer receives a signal from the FTIR detector and gives this fingerprint of the unknown sample. The students believe that the sample is some sort of wax and will need to determine if that is in fact what they are testing. The FTIR software comes with a collection of databases that will search for the fingerprint of a known substance that matches the unknown profile. In this view, the top figure is the unknown sample and the bottom figure is the library match that best fits the substance. The library match found that this is in fact was wax that students were testing. Thanks, Ryan. Another objective of our center is community outreach to create an interest in science, math, and technology and prepare the future workforce for the technology they will someday face. We are available to speak at schools and community groups, offering hands-on science experiments for middle and high school students. We can also offer job shadowing and internship opportunities for high schoolers interested in learning about biotech career fields. We also coordinate community education events, including our annual Biotechnology Day in association with SciWork Science Center in Winston-Salem. This yearly event attracts hundreds of middle and high school students where they learn about science and biotech concepts such as clean room environments, micropipetting, chromatography, electrophoresis, and DNA extraction. This young lady in pink so far holds our record for the longest strand of DNA extracted from a strawberry. This year we'll hold the DNA challenge and see if anyone can produce a longer strand. This year's Biotechnology Day will be September 29th. Come join us if you can. So what's next, you may ask. In our plans for 2012, we're proposing a mobile training lab. So the analytical training lab, through the analytical training lab, we've established serves industry, educators, and students. There's a portion of these groups that have need of our lab and equipment, but are unable to travel to the triad for these services. The mobile lab with expandable side panels would accommodate a class of 16 participants and would house an interchangeable selection of analytical, analytical equipment for hands-on training. This self-contained traveling laboratory will allow us to provide training to biotech companies literally at their front door, making our services available truly statewide. We hope you've enjoyed learning more about BioNetwork, the Pharmaceutical Center, and its analytical training lab, and invite you to stop by and see for yourself this unique training facility. Whether you need on-the-job training or you need training to get that job, we can be your resource. Whether you're a student wanting to sharpen your analytical skills or a teacher seeking that edge in your classroom, we're your resource for analytical skill building and testing expertise. 
If you wish to make inquiries about our services, here's our contact information. You can email Ryan at gilmorer at ncbionetwork.org and he'll share more details about training in the lab and help you determine what services best meet your needs. And now we want to take a few moments to answer your questions about the lab and its operations. Thank you, Merrick and Ryan, and I've been taking a note of all the questions that have come in during today's BioForum. And uh, we've got plenty of time to address those and other questions. So if you have additional questions, please go ahead and send those into the chat, uh, and we will address those at this time. So Merrick and Ryan, we'll, uh, we'll start here at the top of this list and work our way down. Okay. Uh, the first question, does the Pharma Center and Lab develop and share curricula or protocols with community colleges who want to teach new techniques? Uh, the answer of that is absolutely. Uh, we can work uh, with colleges and educators um, to, like I said, update your curriculum, help you with lab activities, bring you in the lab. Uh, we will share uh, complete courses, parts of courses, whatever you need. Absolutely. Second question, how does the UPLCH class make the transition easier from using a traditional HPLC? I'll let Ryan tell you more about that. Well, that's a good question. Um, actually, what happens in the actual instrument and the software is that you can put in all the information you have as if you were going to run your HPLC, and then what happens is a software program in the, uh, in the instrument will actually make all the transitions for you. It'll change all your flow rates and um, amounts that you need for injection, and it will automatically uh, inject all the samples under the HP, uh, the UPLC H class settings. So that makes it that nice, easy transition, and the software is actually really easy to use. Thanks, Ryan. Question three. If companies wanted to bring samples for testing to the analytical lab, would they be able to do that, and if so, at what cost? Uh, well, the answer to that is both yes and no. Uh, we do not offer testing service to companies but we do match companies that need testing uh, with some of the companies that use the equipment in our lab. Uh, so technically, yes, <laughs> but you wouldn't be going through us. Um, so we can make those recommendations and, and help put those connections together. Uh, and the costs, uh, I can't quote you direct fees right now, but they would be uh, substantially less than if you had to go uh, to a normal testing service. Question four, how do I find out about the available courses and how do I sign up? Um, available courses um, will be posted on the BioNetwork website. Uh, you can also uh, let us know your contact information or email address and we do uh, an email uh, mailing out before each semester to let people know what courses that we're offering. Uh, sign up is through uh, the Continuing Education Department at Forsyth Tech. Um, they do host a registration process. So you would register through them. Is the equipment in your facility validated? Is it Part 11 compliant? Ryan? Uh, actually, all the equipment in our lab is not validated because we are not a GMP laboratory. Um, that's something that we might look towards in the future, but as of now, it is, uh, it is under preventative maintenance by the actual vendors from the company, but it is not validated. And what are the con credentials of our trainers? Um, each of our trainers have uh, extreme experience <laughs> in the laboratory. Um, most of them have experience working in industry. All of them have uh, experience teaching, uh, teaching at both levels, um, either um, high school and also uh, adult training. Uh, so we have we're very fortunate to have a large group of, of very well-trained educators uh, that can do this training. Um, so yes. Question number seven, is PCR taught in the training lab? Ryan? Uh, yes, through our working uh, with DNA class, we do do um, procedures with PCR, and you will get to actually get hands-on on the PCR, run the machine, and subsequent tests after the PCR is ran. 
and of course, you know, if depending on who you are, if you're a company or you are uh, an educator wanting to bring a class in, we could also arrange a, a different type of class specializing just in that specific technique if you're interested. Question number eight is what is the cost for your training courses? Uh, that varies uh, depending on the course that we're offering, the types of materials, how long that it is offered. Uh, most of them, uh, don't, don't quote me on this, but the general range would be from about $95 uh, to about $250. Um, so uh, the range may extend slightly under or above, but I believe that would be a, a good estimate. Question nine, is the training recognized by the FDA in any way? And do you offer, is that the next question? Okay, no, it's a different question. <laughs> is the training recognized by the FDA in any way? Uh, it does not have any kind of official FDA recognition or um, designation, but we do follow FDA guidelines and rules in developing these courses. So what we're teaching is going to equal what anyone will be doing inside an FDA regulated uh, company. The next question, do you offer tours of your facilities to companies outside of your area? Uh, the answer to that is absolutely. We would love to have uh, companies, educators, even students who want to see the equipment, see what the lab looks like, uh, come in and take a look and see if uh, this is something uh, that they want to offer within their company or school. Or if you're just curious and would like to see what we have here in the lab, um, we invite you to come. Just give us a call and we'll set up a schedule and you can stop by. Next question, when and how can we sign up for the mobile lab? <laughs> uh, the mobile lab is uh, in the planning process and we are seeking uh, complete funding to put that together. We do have partial funding in place. We're waiting to hear back from a few grants that we've applied for and that feels very positive and we're very hopeful. If everything goes the way we plan, uh, we should be able to move forward with the mobile lab um, starting the end of this year, moving into spring of next year, and we hope to have the mobile lab ready um, by the end of next fiscal year, so by June of 2012. Um, signing up for that uh, would be a matter of contacting us and uh, arranging whatever you need. Does your planned mobile lab have its own electrical source? Yes, the lab will be completely self-contained. It will have its own generator, uh, HVAC systems, and everything that would need to be able to go to a college or a company, park in their parking lot, and then move on from there to offer training uh, with no assistance from the college or the company whatsoever. So it would be completely self-contained. The next question, do you have room in the center for analytical devices from other mass spec manufacturers? Um, absolutely. Um, we are open to any manufacturing company. Uh, we have settled on a few vendors uh, just because it's easier to network pieces of equipment together and share the same kind of software. So if we had uh, lots of different types of equipment from different vendors, uh, that would mean we would have to double up on the software costs and, and the computer costs to run them. Um, but we're certainly open uh, to bring in any other type of equipment. And that's one of the things we do. We go into industry, talk to them about what's being used, and uh, make sure that we can represent in our lab what we're seeing out there. So we do have plans, um, especially from a GC standpoint, we're going to be bringing in some Agilent units. Uh, coming up in this fiscal year, that's something that we have heard from industry that they would like to have some training on. Um, so yes, we're open uh, to any types of equipment. And is there a cost for sharing the courses? Uh, if you're talking about from an educator standpoint, if you're wanting to use some of these courses, no, there would not be a, a cost there, uh, only if we are bringing in our educators uh, to train you on those courses. Uh, however, um, you know, we would want to make sure, you know, if you are, are taking the courses and you're going to be using those, um, 
that you know you were either taking them entirety or taking uh, pieces of them that are going to make sense uh, with the curriculum that you're using. And uh, also, if, if before using the courses, you need uh, any kind of training on the equipment, a train the trainer for the course, uh, we'd like to offer that opportunity as well uh, before using the course in your classroom. Is any certification given for completing the available training? And if so, will this certification be useful in industry? Um, we, of course, give certification of attendance when someone uh, takes one of the courses, but as an actual certified program, one of the things we are working for um, is an analytical certification uh, that would consist of a certain number of contact hours um, made up of a variety of courses that a person would be able to choose and combine together uh, that would help them achieve whatever career goal that they were after. Uh, we do believe that this would be useful in industry uh, and be able to map out and show uh, industry leaders that they have gone through a sequence of courses that will give them the right kind of experiences for a job. The next question, what is the estimated cost for the mobile lab? Will there be any potential naming opportunities for major private donors for the lab? Uh, excellent question. Uh, those costs have not been determined uh, down to the penny yet. Um, we are currently uh, working with uh, companies that will be providing the components to that, uh, the truck portion of the lab, the trailer, things like that. So we are negotiating fees uh, right at this moment. Uh, so I, I wouldn't be able to give a, a total value uh, of what it's going to be at the end. Um, potential naming opportunities for major private donors um, is, is something we can talk about. Uh, and in naming, I'm not exactly sure uh, what you mean in naming it. It's probably going to be the uh, BioNetwork Mobile Lab, um, but there will be uh, opportunities for somewhere on the lab, on the trailer of the truck, uh, probably on the back, uh, for major donors to have uh, graphics uh, supporting their name, putting their logo, uh, and things like that. So there would be a definite opportunity for cross-promotional uh, activities um, for people that would like to donate uh, either major donors or we would gladly talk to minor donors as well. All right, thank you, Merrick, and thank you, Ryan. I think I can handle this question. Will the answers to these questions be captured and shared in print later? Uh, we don't have any plans to distribute these uh, in a uh, print format, but today's Bioform has been recorded, and you can uh, watch it anytime on demand, and I've dropped the link in the chat box. But uh, if you'll just go to ncbionetwork.org and click on Bioform, and you'll see a list of all of the events that we have available on demand, and you can watch those at any time. So as we wrap up today, I'd like you to take just a moment to answer the brief survey, which is on the right side of your screen. Your feedback will help us as we plan future Bioform events, and then be sure to click Submit when you're finished. Again, today's presentation was recorded, and you can view it again. Uh, you'll receive a thank you email from BioNetwork tomorrow, which will include a direct web link to the recording. And again, you can also find out about it by going to ncbionetwork.org and clicking on the Bioform tab. Mark your calendars for our August Bioform. Registration for this event is free and available now at ncbionetwork.org. I would like to thank our panelists for today. Thanks also to North Carolina Bio Network for making this presentation possible. And thanks, of course, to you for your time and participation. This concludes our webinar. And on behalf of Bio Network, thank you and have a great day.